It is an age-old tradition in programming that whenever we start with a new programming language, then the first program to write is of printing hello world. And this is what we are going to do in today's video. I am Akash, you are watching Mr. About Tech. Without any further ado, let's get started. So let's open Visual Studio Code. And these are my files. So this is the CSS file, the HTML file and the JavaScript file. So JavaScript file is right now empty because whatever we are going to do, we are going to do in this file. So I'll be starting off with this file and I have already created these two files as you can see. And don't worry about the code here. So it is just basic HTML and CSS. So I'll show it to you by running it in a minute. This code is going to be available to you to download in the description down below. So I'll be uploading this code in my GitHub account. I'll provide the link for that in the description so you can get this code from there. So let's just run this now. So for running this, I last time told you to uh, check out the live server extension that the VS Code provides. So if you have VS Code, if you are using VS Code, then uh, do install that extension. And after installing the live server extension, then in the bottom right corner, you are going to see this button that says go live. So if you click on this, then it is going to open the default browser with this code. Uh, running so I have this HTML code running on this live server now so you can see the output here and as you can see that it is saying this is running on port 5500 if you click on it again it is going to stop the live server so let me just click it again and run it again so this is that now let me just set it up real quick okay so so let's close these and we are just going to focus on the javascript file okay so first off what we are going to do is we are going to just print the simple string that is hello world okay so how can we do that so there is this object that is console so this console object has a uh, different methods like log method which we are going to use right now so let me just first uh, use it and show you the output and then we are going to talk more about the console object okay so let's write this method console dot log so this is how you can specify the console log but we can write the console log by just specifying clg and we just have to press tab and it is going to just complete that string so console dot log object so in the place of object we just have to specify hello world and that's it so it is saved automatically and here uh, the page is also reloaded but we are unable to see any of uh, the string that says hello world so ignore this this is just the html one so we just want the hello world to be printed but it is going to be shown in the browser's console so how we can go there just right click go in the inspect and here we have to go into console so here is our output as you can see hello world congratulations we have successfully uh, completed the hello world printing part so now let's talk about the console uh, and the log method and all of it so console so console is as i said it is an object this object is provided by the window object so we have a window object which has this console and in that there is a method that is the log method so with that we can print any message in the browser console so this console with the help of this console what we can do is we can 
access the browser's console so we can write uh, anything we can print anything in the uh, browser's console which is this one that you can see right now so we have this window object as well which represents this browser window so it has other different uh, things as well with which we can uh, have the access for the history, the navigation and other things as well. But the window is at the top here and then below that there is console. So this console has different types of methods and one of it is log method. So you just now saw the output for this log method and how you can use this log method so now what we are going to do is we are going to see three of other such uh, methods of console with which we can print some message onto the console so this was the first method the next method is console dot info now this method also works same as the log method so let me just write here something let's write my name and that's it so now as you can see here that it is also printing a same string similar kind of uh, the string only like the previous one that is the log so there is no much of a difference that you can see here right it is one or the other same it just works similar to the log method so then why do we need two such methods which work the same right so you can think of it as this way so the log method is mostly used by the developers for debugging purposes so basic debugging uh, purposes you can use the log method and if you want to show any certain message to the user side then you can use the info method now the log method when used in the development environment it is just used for uh, checking something or for debugging and once the work is done it is just uh, removed by the developer but if you want to show some specific messages to the user then you can use the info method now the next method is console.warn okay so with this method if you haven't yet guessed it this is for displaying a warning message so let me write that this is a warning let me correct the spelling okay so this is a warning message and as you can see now you will be able to differentiate the difference between the previous messages and this message as this has a yellow background a dark yellow background and yellow text so this is how the warning messages look in the console so this is for printing a warning message and the next one is for displaying error that is console.error this is an error all right so this is an error it is printed here now this has a dark red background and a red text which uh, says whatever the error you want to show so this is how you can show warnings errors and messages using all of these four different methods that the console provides all right now next we are going to talk about some methods which are also important which are not really to print any kind of message on the console but they have different purpose so we are going to talk about such methods so one of it is for clearing the console window so here we have all these things written here so what if i want to clear all this so for that the method is console.clear so let me write it out console.clear okay so here we don't need to specify anything uh, in between the circle brackets we just have to specify this and as you can see the output here in the console and which says console was cleared so this is the message that is printed and all the previous messages that were of the log info warning and error methods are all now gone and we have just this one message now 
what if uh, you don't even want this message to be printed then what you can do is you can just click on this little button which says clear console and it is going to clear out that as well so there is no message right now and the console is totally clear but uh, this was about the clear method so this is how the clear method works and it is just going to show a simple message that the console is cleared so that is that so now the next method is the group method now with the name itself uh, you must have guessed it that it is for grouping something but what exactly so it is to group different messages all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to just comment this line by specifying double slash and there is one shortcut as well for this so you just have to press the control button and the forward slash and it is going to comment this line out so commenting a line means you are just saying that ignore this line uh, i don't want this to be executed so this is uh, basically what you are saying so it is not going to execute or it's not going to run this and that's why as you can see here now all our messages are back all right so now let's use the group uh, method so with this group method let's group these last two lines so these last two lines of messages let's group them so here i'm going to specify console dot group and lastly semicolon and again we don't have to specify anything uh, between these uh, circle brackets so now in the output as you can see these are now grouped under this so these messages are now under this group and the thing is that it is now saying console dot group so if we want to edit this then we have to specify something between this so let's specify just group okay now as you can see it is uh, saying just this group and we have this uh, messages under this group okay now what if i don't want this last message to be included uh, in the group so for that we have to specify the end of the group so here i'm going to write console dot group end and that is all that we have to do now as you can see here just the warning message is under this group and this error message is now out of this group now as you can see that it is showing everything that is there in the group right now but what if we want this to load in this fashion that is in the collapse form and whenever we click on this then only it is going to show us what is there in the group so to do that we have to just change this from group to group collapsed and now as you can see whenever we refresh it is now in the collapse fashion and if you click on this then and then only we are getting whatever there is in that group so this was all about the group and now the next one is console dot assert so with this assert method what we can do is we can have a message displayed only when a boolean expression is false so let me show you by writing it so i'm just going to comment all these lines out and let's write the console.assert method so console.assert and in here there are going to be two arguments the first argument is going to be a boolean expression which yields true or false and whenever it is false then it is going to execute uh, it is going to display the statement that is here so we'll just write a message here that is this is false okay so this is a simple message and right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to just straight away specify false 
so this is false and as you can see now that uh, it is showing this error message that says assertion failed this is false so this is our message and it's a, it is showing a default message that is assertion has been failed because the boolean value here is false now if we write true here then this is not going to be executed as you can see here the console is empty nothing will be executed because this is true so this is how this assert works if the boolean expression is uh, true then it is going to uh, display nothing if the boolean expression is false then and then only it is going to display the message so i haven't specified any boolean expression so in place of that you have to specify any kind of boolean expression which yields true or false right so now the next method is count so this is to count the number of iterations in loops now just for this example i'm going to use a for loop now i know that we haven't yet covered the for loop but don't worry about it we are going to cover it in the future videos and we are going to cover it in detail but just for this uh, one demo of a console dot count method and how you can use this console dot count i'm just going to use a for loop to show how this works all right so let's let me just take this uh code here okay so this is a for loop so in this as you can see that i have this console.count method so now here as you can see in the uh, console of the browser that it is showing how many iterations are being carried out by this for loop so it is going from 1 to 10 so we have 10 iterations uh, that are being carried out by this for loop now it is showing this uh, default uh, written here the message default which is shown here by default so what if we want to override this default then uh, we just have to specify the string with which we want to rewrite it so here i'm going to specify the string as iteration as you can see now now this says iteration so this is how you can uh, do that this is how you can replace the default so this was the console.count method let's comment this out and let's move on to the next one now the next one is really interesting and it is going to be really useful for you so it is the time method so console dot time now how it is going to be useful so here i'm going to again take a for loop so let's take a for loop here so now as you can see here that uh, this for loop is going to have a lot of iterations right now if you want to know that how long is it going to take to execute this loop then you can use the console.time method here to figure that out so let's write console.time and we have to end it here so console.time end all right so this is the start of it this is the end of it now let's see the output here so this is showing the output in milliseconds so this is 3.8 milliseconds so this loop took 3.8 milliseconds to execute so this is how you can get the time of your code how much time it is taking to execute isn't that interesting so this can be really useful to you now let's uh, increase the iterations here so let's add four more zeros and let's see what happens okay so on the browser side it is loading okay it is taking some time here okay so we have the output so it took close to a uh, 6000 milliseconds that is it took six seconds around six seconds to execute this uh, for loop so this was how you can use the console.time method and now let's move on and let's just comment this out so 
the next one and the last one is the console.trace method with the name itself uh, you can know that it is for tracing something right so now for this example i'm going to take a function so if you don't know anything about functions then it is fine we are going to see it in detail in the coming videos but if you know something also about functions then uh, this is not going to be that tough for you to understand it is just that if we are on to uh, some function and if we don't know that uh, who is uh, calling this function then we can know the whole tracing of that uh, functions call so let's see how this uh, console.trace works all right so i'm going to first have a button created on the html side so let's go on to this html and here i'm going to just create a button so button and i'm going to just specify a name like trace all right and i want to create an on click here so that i can uh, you know track that click so that whenever they click then i want to just uh, run a function through javascript so with on click uh, here i'm going to specify a function name that is old function and this uh, circle bracket so that uh, to specify that it is a function and this function we are going to define it in the javascript file all right so let's go on to the javascript file okay so here i'm going to have this old function so this uh, old function is specified here and then in this we have this new function called so this is the code for this new function all right uh, so this old function is then calling this new function and in that new function as i told you that i have this console.trace so so this is a really small program so we already know that the old function is calling this new function but just hypothetically think that this function is uh, between some thousand lines of code and you don't know who is calling this a uh, function then you can just use this and after that let's run this code and let's see the output what is shown so here i'm just going to click on this trace button and as you can see that we have this tracing here and we have to see from the bottom so on click that is when we click this button so this was then uh, called then after based on that this function was called and then because of that function we have this new function also in to this function so this new function was then called so this is the tracing of this new function at the end we got this new function from this old function so that is how you can use this uh, console.trace method in javascript okay so i hope that you must have gotten something new to learn out of this video and there are more different such methods as well and i'm going to give a link for that in the description so that you can check those methods out as well and i guess that's it for this video and i will see you in the next one